Hey guys, we're here in sunny Florida. I've got my little solar panel plugged in. A bunch of cable running into this room. I recently picked up six more of these eco-worthy rack mounted batteries. I'm gonna put them in this rack here and add it to my main system. But I thought while I got it out, uh, I wanna look at how does this rack mounted battery, this five kilowatt hours, it's very inexpensive. How could we use that with a solar generator? And in particular, how does it compare to like a uh, extra battery? What are the pros and cons? So let's get started. Okay, so I wanna start with just the Mega One. Let's say you went out, waited for a sale, you got this for $400, and it puts out 2000 watts continuous, one kilowatt hour on the battery. If you're not familiar with kilowatt hours, let's just call that one refrigerator day. That is, you could run a refrigerator for one day. That's how much battery it has. It can take up to 800 watts of solar input and will recharge at 1400 watts off the AC. All right, so we're gonna say this is all we got. In this scenario, we're saying the power is going out and it's not gonna come back on, right? We're gonna have no power now. So if we only have the Mega One, we're plugged in, we've got 26 watts running some lights and I got 109 watts coming in from the solar. So, that's okay, but we want to look at, you know, adding a second battery, the extra battery from Opus, or do we go with a rack mounted battery? All right, so let's start by adding the second battery and see what that gets us. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in the B2 extra battery. So let's look at what that gets us. So now we've spent a total of $1,100 instead of 400. We still have the 2000 watts continuous output, but now we've upped our battery to three refrigerator days, right? Three kilowatt hours. And this is real important too, is we've now gone from 800 watts of solar input to a potential of 2,900, that's huge. So this B2 extra battery gives us the ability to bring in a lot of extra solar power. Okay, so we look at our system now, I went ahead and plugged in the air conditioner, although it's just running the fan right now. So we're putting out 91 watts, bringing in 112 on solar. Uh, I don't have my other panel um, ready to plug in, but we could plug in 2100 watts of solar here. And so in addition to going up to that three kilowatt hours, like if we had no solar, no electricity, we could run that refrigerator for three days just off the battery here. And then if you bring in 2100 or even 2900 watts of solar, uh, you can run a lot of stuff and just keep right on going as long as the sun's shining. Okay, so we spent 1100 bucks to get here. Let's look at what if instead of doing this, we went with this, this guy. next scenario. Instead of adding the B2 extra battery, we're going to go with this eco-worthy rack mounted battery. We'll have to add a battery charger and we're still going to have the same Mega One. So let's see how this shakes out. Now we've spent $1,570 instead of $1,100 that we spent with the extra battery and the Mega One. We say we've got the same 2,000 watts of output, but now we're doubled our battery capacity to six kilowatt hours. So we can go six days on the refrigerator with no other input, no solar, nothing from the utility. We can get six days off of this now. And that's really good. Uh, we're back down to 800 watts of solar input because we lost all that 2100 that the extra battery gave us. So we're back down to the base 800 and we can still charge at 1400 watts. Next, this rack mount battery up with a set of 10 gauge wire. It's going to have a 20 amp fuse on it. Make sure you get a set of wire that has a fuse if you're doing this. They'll have ring terminals for the positive and the negative. And then the other end has an Anderson connector that we're going to plug into the solar input of this system. So this solar generator is going to think that this battery is, a, is an array of solar panels. The thing you got to watch out for is check the uh, maximum voltage that your system can take in from panels. In this case, it's 80 volts. And this battery bank will probably range from 51 to 58 or so. So we're going to be okay, but if this unit had a max voltage of 40, then you would fry it permanently if you did that. So make sure you check that on your system. Here we see we've got almost 700 watts coming in from the solar and it's a max 800. Again, this guy thinks that this battery is just a solar panel. 
so it's bringing it on the solar. Running my AC and lights out there, so we're putting out 550 watts. Now, one thing to note here, guys, is um, there are some differences here. If we had our B2 extra battery connected with our smart connector into here, then these two would act like sort of one smart system. If you plug, if the power comes back and you plug in the AC, it's going to charge both batteries at the same time, and it's going to do it smartly. Same thing for solar. If you have this plugged into solar, it's going to charge both batteries. That doesn't happen over here, right? Power comes back on and you plug this guy in to the AC, it's going to recharge this battery, but there's no connection to this battery to where it can recharge. So to do that, you actually have to pick up a, like a 48 volt battery charger and then charge it separately, which, you know, that's not that bad. And there's some advantage in that you can recharge them both faster because they're on two separate circuits in your house. But it's something to note, like this is just a little cleaner, you know, in addition to the extra battery gives you that 2100 extra watts of solar input, which is huge. But that's the big thing. Now let's say you've run both your batteries down and the power hasn't come back on, but you've got a bunch of solar. Well, you could unplug this, put your solar into here, and then you could plug this battery charger into the output of this system. So you're going to let this system with solar recharge this guy directly off the output of the system. You could do that. So there is a way around it. Okay, in our last scenario, we're going to imagine that we bought all this stuff. So the whole system, how, could, how would that work? Well, first of all, now we've got the Mega One, the B2 battery, the rack battery, and the charger. And that's going to cost $2,270. We still have our 2,000 watt max limit because we only have the Mega One. Now we're all the way up to 8 kilowatt hours. That's 8 days we could run the refrigerator with no other input, no solar, no utility. That's a lot. Uh, 2,900 watts of solar potential because we've got the Mega 2, I mean the Mega 1 and the B2 battery. And we've got that 1,400 watts of AC if the power comes back on. So wow, this gives us a lot. But so how are we going to bring in that extra power from our rack battery if we have the Mega 1 and the B2 extra battery already? Well remember, each one of these, this guy has a solar input of 800 watts and this one has a solar input of 2100 watts. So we can put our solar array on one input and we can put this rack battery on the other and it'll just see it like it's a solar array. Right, the only thing you got to be careful of is you don't want to exceed the, you know, the 20 amp, or, yeah, 20 amp fuse in here, because these are only rated for 30 amps. So that's great. That gives us uh, eight kilowatt hours total battery, and it's very inexpensive. I mean, 870 bucks for five kilowatt hours is uh, a little less than half of what this costs per kilowatt hour. Uh, but again, this does give you the, all that solar input and it charges smartly. So, you know, I'm not saying necessarily that this is is better way to do it. Uh, it's just uh, another option depending on your situation. So lastly, I think I'll unplug this and I'll show you real quick how we can actually recharge this battery off of this guy with solar too. All right, so here we go. I've got the battery on. I unplugged it from the solar there got our charger and I'm gonna plug this in and I'm gonna leave the air conditioner and other stuff on when I do it so you can see that we're already pulling 553 watts and this is probably gonna add about a thousand to that so let's see how it likes that all right it should ramp up kind of slow we might get a spike okay yep, there you go now we've got 2,000 watts to work with here should be all right and we're recharging anyways I hope I didn't confuse you too much <laughs> but thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one